Uh, well, give me a second, please. We are going to start soon. <clears throat> All right, uh, good evening, uh, Venerable Abantes and Bikunis. Uh, good evening to our friends who are watching us on Facebook and YouTube Live. I would uh, respectfully uh, welcome all our uh, Venerable uh, Masters to our biweekly sutra discussion. And also, I would like to welcome all our friends uh, who are uh, joining us from uh, different countries. Uh, so today is going to be another amazing uh, discussion day for us. So before we begin the discussion, let us pay our respect and homage to the Buddha uh, by reciting Namo Tassa three times together. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa. I pay my respect and homage to him, the blessed one, the worthy one, the fully enlightened Buddha. <clears throat> uh, dear friends, uh, I would like to introduce our venerable monks and nuns to our audience. Uh, today, uh, we have the uh, privilege of having uh, Bhante Yoga Vacha Rahula. Uh, he's joining us from Washington, D.C. And uh, we have venerable Dhamma Dinna uh, joining us from uh, uh, Virginia. Uh, well, cl close to Washington, D.C. And we have Venerable Trudeau uh, joining us from Florida. And we have Venerable uh, Shakedita uh, joining us from Montenegro. <laughs> it's midnight for you. And we have Bante uh, Uparatana uh, Naik Hamdru joining us from Washington, D.C. Then we have Bhante Jinananda. Normally he joins from uh, Ottawa, Canada. This time he's in Washington, DC, staying with uh, Bhante Ogawacha Rahula. And a little while ago, uh, he also met uh, Bhante Uparatana. <laughs> and then we have Bhante Kusala joining us from here, from our temple um, and in Mississauga, Toronto. Then we have Bhante uh, Santa Sobana joining us from Los Angeles. And we have Bhante Sumeda joining us from uh, Ottawa. Uh, this is your first time, <laughs> Venerable Sumeda. And we have uh, Bhante Nalaka joining us from uh, California this time. You used to be in Arizona, now you're in <laughs> California. Then we have Bhante Sunita joining us from Ottawa, Canada. Then we have Bhante Anuruddha joining us from Cambridge, Canada. And then of course we have another Bhante Vimala Jyoti, he's invisible. <laughs> uh, so uh, it is such a great joy to have all of you venerable uh, masters uh, for this bi-weekly uh, sutra discussion. And uh, I have a kind request uh, from our uh, friends who are uh, watching us uh, on YouTube and Facebook, uh, please uh, share this uh, program in your social media timelines for the great benefit of your friends and colleagues. And uh, this is uh, the gift of Dhamma 
that we can share for the greater benefit of all sentient beings. And today's topic is going to be on the Buddhist monks and nuns and the, and the mental stress. <laughs> How the monks and nuns deal with uh, this mental stress and what are the coping techniques they have. I'm pretty sure our lay people are interested in, in this particular technique. Uh, topic. And uh, I uh, have this uh, topic today is because some uh, friends asked me, they were interested in the in knowing how monks and nuns are dealing with their own stress <laughs> or mental stress or whatever, emotional, psychological stress. Um, after all, we know that uh, although we have put the ropes on, <laughs> We are still human beings. We are not enlightened yet. And when we deal with the society, there is a possibility of experiencing some sort of uh, stress. Uh, uh, may not be the great in, in great deal, but at least we, I'm pretty sure, uh, we experience some sort of stress. Um, but because what we practice, what we do, helps us get going with our social uh, and spiritual activities and programs. So, um, now what is the definition of mental stress? Um, and uh, what is, uh, what could be the example of uh, mental stress? And, um, and of course, there are uh, some signs of stress of the uh, mental stress pointed out by the psychologist and uh, and then what causes this mental stress? And how do you treat mental stress? And also personally as monks and nuns, how do you cope with the, the, all kinds of stresses in your life? So this is something that we would like to discuss today openly. And uh, I don't know, maybe uh, I would like to start with uh, uh, Bhante Yoga with Rahula. <laughs> So, uh, Bhante Rahula, how uh, how do you explain this? So, how do you see the mental stress? Uh, and is there uh, any day or or moment that you felt a, maybe mental stress or any other kinds of stress? And what are the uh, or how did you cope with such things? And if you had any. Would you like to talk about you? <laughs> well, you know, on one level, mental stress is a, a reaction to anything unpleasant that you have to encounter. Uh, and it could be just a, a very brief moment of some uh, mental reaction to some unpleasant situation. And then, of course, there's more chronic stress of People, although probably monastics don't have so much of chronic stress like some laypersons have or mm. in very traumatic situations. But generally, I mean, we all encounter, of course, the unpleasant uh, things happening as to it from time to time, whether it's interactions with other people, uh, laypersons, maybe even other <laughs> monks. Uh, and of course, just general situations, uh, uh, you know, of the, the world. But the, uh, you know, practicing the Noble Eightfold Path, I mean, uh -huh. in general, is, you know, a, the way that is a big help in reducing uh, stress or the, uh, our accumulating stress. Uh -huh. so usually when people talk about stress, it's an accumulation of stress, uh, the, the ones that really bring like physical problems to and, and sort of mental breakdown, this is an accumulation of stress. Mm. So with people that meditate, I mean, for myself, I found that daily meditation uh, works on a general level uh, to, and, and the mindfulness, of course, uh, being mindful when situations arise and then uh, being able to check your reactions before you would uh, react in some unpleasant way or to allow it to 
fester and, and grow. So, you know, just in general, the practice of the Noble Eightfold Path, even observing uh, precepts is a, is a part of uh, that way because you refrain from, uh, you know, certain types of behaviors and, and interactions with others that uh, could help minimize the stressful situations also. So, you know, just in practicing sila and samadhi and panya, all three of those are ways that uh, on a, on a long term general way help to prevent ourselves from uh, getting overly uh, stressed out that but you know in re, uh, assuming that you know people meditating uh, you know twice a day like usually mm. monastics to do or you know a lot of them uh, daily practice mm. uh, but in my own uh, situation apart from the the daily practice uh, is and I've mentioned this before, I think the first, uh, the first uh, program that I attended on uh, with the Venerable Sarana Paula, yeah. I, I was asked this question also, I think the topic was similar and I, I gave an example of uh, myself that when I was really one of the prominent times I was stressed out was when uh, somebody hacked my computer uh -huh. and, uh, very seriously, you know, were hacking it right when I was actually watching the computer and partly it was because of my own fault, my naivety and allowing somebody to, uh, you know, to, you know, say they were going to help me uh, <laughs> fix the computer when actually they were the ones that were <laughs> making it worse. So <clears throat> I had to, you know, especially be aware of not losing my, uh, you know, temper at these <laughs> persons or allowing it to affect me. But so I've uh, been incorporating a specific practice. You asked about specific types of techniques. And what I have found to be the most helpful, especially in those times when you feel yourself getting upset or irritated in, in some situation, is the practice of what I call an M&M. &M. Mm. So an M and M stands for a minute meditation, or a minute of mindfulness. Mm. It's a, a specific training that I've developed over uh, many years, uh, in which every hour during the day we pause and bring our attention to the present moment. That means either coming back uh, to feel the body in the present moment, coming back to the breathing. And more specifically, I have found one of the really uh, powerful ways is to take a deep, slow breath. So mm. anytime you feel uh, the mind getting agitated, uh, whether you're in the midst of talking to somebody or something, to just uh, bring your attention to the, the body, because the body is always in the present moment, uh, but specifically to take a deep, slow breath. And that means... Mm. This takes training to do, <coughs> though, but I've learned this in my yoga practice uh, and in developing deep, slow breathing. So whenever you find yourself getting uh, into a situation like that, you just uh, pause and you take a deep, slow breath, like taking three to five seconds just to slowly breathe in, filling up uh, the lower and middle and upper parts of the lungs and especially holding the breath in for three or four or even five seconds to allow mm. all the oxygen in the lungs to get into the bloodstream. And then you slowly uh, breathe out. So deep, slow breathing is a known way of helping to uh, immediately uh, reduce uh, stress mm -hmm. and the reaction because when you're taking a deep, slow breath and holding the breath in, you really can't think about anything else because it takes all of your sort of uh, concentration to do that. And mm. also uh, holding in the breath longer, there's a very pleasant uh, sensations are activated. And it's actually partly to do with dopamine in the brain. Mm. Deep, slow breathing is a known way to increase the dopamine production in the brain, which is a kind of piti, 
Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a, re a stress reducer. So I found that taking two or three deep, slow breaths is a way to uh, really uh, prevent the mind from uh, relaxing it enough that you uh, are able to be in a state of equanimity and carry on your uh, whatever you might have been doing or your, your interaction with others. Mm. I found that to really be the most helpful uh, thing, especially in this sort of surprised situations uh, that can happen at any time you know, mm -hmm. during the day where you get a certain phone calls and <laughs> you know, some unfortunate situation, bad news or whatever has happened. Uh -huh. Before reacting, just pause and take a deep, slow breath and just react, okay, this has happened. Now don't get upset, you know, and it may not be that bad. A lot of people make a mountain out of a molehill. So they, they hear something or they have some interaction and they, they tend to let their mind, uh, you know, jump to the future or, or overreact. So mm -hmm. that type of deep, slow breathing and staying grounded in the body also. Mm -hmm. the mindfulness of the body in general is a good practice because uh, when, you're, when you when uh, you have a, a habit of always uh, uh, keeping the, the sensations of the body sort of in the background of the mind or just closer attention to the body, you can feel the, the physical reactions arising before they've erupted into, uh, you know, some more unpleasant sort of reaction. So this is, uh, this is really the the technique that I've uh, found the most important, especially for dealing with situations as they arise on a daily basis. But apart yeah. from that, for uh, reaching a general uh, good state of awareness, the, you know, the daily meditation practice, and of course, following the other aspects of the Noble Eightfold Path helps to uh, keep the nervous system in a, a more advantageous uh, condition to mm -hmm. deal with these kind of situations. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Bhante Rahula, uh, I know uh, even uh, in your first time you talked about that M&M meditation technique. I think uh, people really loved it and, and they, are, they are trying, they are practicing it. I, even some of uh, my friends and students here in Toronto, uh, they greatly appreciated that uh, one minute <laughs> meditation. Um, so, uh, Bhante, uh, there's a question. I, I also would like to encourage our audience to uh, ask questions from the monks and nuns. If you have any, any question regarding today's uh, topic, and please feel free to make a comment or write your question. Uh, my assistant, David, will help me take your question. So, uh, Bhante uh, Ravla, there is a question uh, for you. Um, uh, this is from uh, YouTube, uh, Chandra Shekhar P. Is that whenever I am stressed, I feel burning sensation in mind. Is this correct, Ajahn? Uh, a burning sensation in the mind? Yeah. Uh, well, it, I don't know whether it's a mind or heart. Maybe. <laughs> people will have different, of course, reactions and will have different uh, manifestations of that. Usually it might be a burning sensation in your body. <laughs> Yeah. more than the mind but uh, <laughs> you know i haven't experienced uh, burning in the mind except for maybe you know get to the point where you're starting to get a little bit of, uh, angry but then of course you you diffuse that by checking yourself and as i mentioned i, I would yeah. take a few deep slow breaths and that immediately helps to diffuse uh, the buildup of that kind mm. of uh, uh, reaction yeah thank you uh and uh, dear friends, I also would like to acknowledge uh, the presence <laughs> of uh, Bhante Shanti Vimala, uh, who is joining us uh, from Detroit, uh, USA, Michigan, and also Bhante uh, Ananda joining us uh, from uh, Cambridge, uh, Canada, and uh, my teacher Bhante uh, Mudita uh, joining us from uh, Detroit, uh, USA. Uh, so, uh, and also, like, you know, uh, if, if possible, Venerable Sirs and Venerable Vikunis, if, if you have any particular 
uh, experience of mental stress, maybe you think, you know, you maybe you could tell a story and how you uh, cope with that. So we have uh, Verba Nalika from California raised his hand. I'm pretty sure you have uh, a, a beautiful story to share with us, Verba Nalika. <laughs> Sadhu, greetings, venerables. I'm happy to be able to speak well now after this is day number six of having COVID-19. It finally caught up with me because I got lax and I didn't wear a mask recently and I didn't have hand sanitizer and that's probably how I caught it going to the store. So this is a reminder to all of you to keep that mask with you and hand sanitizer at a hand. Stay in place. <laughs> Only takes a few seconds for the <laughs> virus to get into your system. Yeah. And thank you, Bante Rahula, for beginning and sharing what you shared because that's a perfect segue into what I wanted to share. So practically for me, I've been dealing with the physical stress of not being able to breathe optimally due to COVID-19. My sense of taste and smell has finally returned. It's almost 100% normal. You can probably tell from my voice, it's a little raspy. So there's phlegm still in my system. That's dukkha, that's physical dukkha. That's the stress of being a sentient being with this coarse body. Mm. That's been part of my contemplation. Yet, as Bhante Rahula mentioned, meditation is key. I've maintained a steady practice for several years now, one hour in the morning and one hour in the evening. And throughout the day, short sessions, 20 minutes, 30 minutes here and there of walking meditation. Even though I couldn't breathe optimally, I was still practicing conscious respiration, Anapanasati. It is a very precious gift, a very skillful means of paya to have in your toolkit. Along with that, I do practice other forms of conscious respirations. Pranayama is one, what's known as box breathing among people who are in the Navy, among Navy SEALs, and the so-called Wim Hof method. But he didn't create that method of intentional hyperventilation followed by holding your breath for a long period of time. That gives me an instant type of sukha, mm. where you, for example, for those who are not familiar, you basically <sighs> up to 30 cycles of that, and then breathe out halfway. So a half exhalation and hold your breath, start a timer. And sometimes I can do that for up to two minutes. Of course, being a Buddhist monk, I couple that with Vedana Nupasana, mm. mindfulness of sensations, seeing how the body can be very stressful, but then through conscious breathing, all of a sudden, oh, everything is more calm now. The mind is more bright. Oh, what happened to those thoughts? There's mm. a temporary suspension. There's a nirodha. There's a sensation, sensation experience right there. Dipta dhamma sukha vihara. Mm. Right here and now, a peace, a tranquility, verifiable here and now, even in the midst of having this affliction in the form of this pathogen, this virus, this coronavirus in my system. It hasn't been easy. I haven't been able to sit as long as I would like to sit, but I've been doing more walking meditation. But that's the physical stress I've been dealing with. Mentally, I've been dealing with the stress of what's going on in the world. I don't live in a vacuum. I'm not under a rock. I'm not blind. I do read the news and I know what's going on. And so many of our fellow human beings are suffering in Ukraine and in Russia. Misinformation, propaganda. I see many of you Sri Lankan venerables here and my heart has been right there in your homeland of Sri Lanka with the Sinhala people. And it's very tragic. Mm. To deny that would be absurd, it would be foolish. But to accept the stress and suffering and to realize how it's affecting me is wise and an opportunity to cultivate metta, karuna, and upeka. After I've done what I can do and realize what's in my capacity to do, and then only then being equanimous with the situation. Mm knowing my limitations, but knowing that I can embrace the situation and be well informed of what's going on so that someone from Sri Lanka can share their suffering with me and know that I am here. 
mm. for them, for our brothers and sisters mm. in Sri Lanka. Mm. So as a result of bringing in the information from the world, I have to acknowledge, yes, that is causing condition for stress, but yet I live in the world, I am a citizen in this global world, mm. and I must also be informed. Mm. So that's where I am. And yeah, I'd like thank you. rather to spend more time listening to the elders yeah. for the rest of the Zoom session. Yeah, thank you, uh, Venerable Naraka, uh, for sharing your story, your experience, of what, uh, how you cope with uh, uh, in a physical... Uh, and I, I, I think I, I have to greatly appreciate you for encouraging people to mask up, you know. <laughs> you, you suffered from this. You did not do it. You thought it was okay. Now you... <laughs> There are other venerable monks and nuns, they also go through the same thing. So I'm encouraging people to mask up. You know, sometimes they might get mad, but it's okay. <laughs> we need to show our compassion. <laughs> yeah. So uh Venerable Trudeau from Florida, what is what is your story? Uh like uh, have you experienced uh, any stressful situation? Can you tell us how you dealt with it? I'm stressed right now. <laughs> oh it's okay relax 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 <laughs> salutations to all the venerables that is present today uh, bhikkhus and bhikkhunis and ayas uh, thank you for having me so I, I think as the world is watching all of us and and you know i'm the youngest one in this group and it appears right appear perception that oh look he's young he looked like he has no stress he has no wrinkles he has no lines right <laughs> don't don't let this face fool you no <laughs> and so today thank you for choosing this this topic because it allows us to vent it allows everyone to, yeah. <laughs> in the monastic order to vent yeah. because the rules for us is to try to keep noble silence like the buddha did mm. um so in modern day terminology and, and vocabularies of the young people of the new generations <clears throat> is that when people try you, try you as in they call you names, they look at you funny, you, they make fun of you, they make fun of your head. It doesn't matter what they make fun of. Mm -hmm. And during the Buddha's time, they also tried the Buddha in many ways, shapes and form. And, you know, when we go back and study the teachings of the Buddha, the life of the Buddha, the one and only historical Gautama Buddha, I find so much inspiration by and through his noble silence when they tried him. So at, at this time in my life, at age 34, I don't know what I got myself into, but I have been engaging in Buddhist psychotherapy over the past four years with all of, actually across the lifespan as young as 14 years old to 80 years old uh, mm -hmm. that have reached out. And as uh, some of the venerables here and our audiences who are watching, the art of Buddhist psychotherapy is extremely delicate, difficult. One must be extremely skillful uh, and well-versed, not only the Dhamma, but also Western psychology and up to date with modern research and the modality most effective and efficient to treat uh, human stress uh, of the mind. And so, you know, there's actually tonight at 8 p.m. I'm working a sex trauma um, abuse case with a mm -hmm. sex addiction specialist in California. Mm -hmm. And so just to get everyone who's watching they're like well what do monks really deal with how do they really actually help people and this mm -hmm. is one of the modalities that we help people is uh the art of psychotherapy and merging western psychology and eastern philosophy together so yeah i've i've ever since i uh, heard talk and it was an experiment because i i just tried it just for fun i was trying to use technology to spread the teachings and now it's at 1.2 million followers on TikTok. And so I, I, I decided to delay some of my studies and partial of my practice to attend to the masses of crowd, to attend to the masses of suffering amid COVID. Um, so I, I decided because, you know, all these young people, they reach out, they said, you know, can you help me? Can you help me? This is what I'm going through. My parents are fighting. I don't know what to do. I'm suicidal. 
I am uh, homicidal. <laughs> you know, my, my teachers uh, are horrible. I wish they, my, I had a student that says, I wish my teacher had COVID. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, so I decided to focus my, my education and experience, my 15 years of clinical experience to help the masses of the young people. So the impact of that, um, that I had to absorb and how I deal with it is that there were, there were at one point, I think two years ago during, a, so what I call one-on-one -on -one sessions with people and I, it was at night and I tried to take the last call and uh, I just couldn't bear it anymore. And I just, I, I passed out in the middle of the one-on-one -on -one session. And so that was when my body told me, you can't save the world. You can't save them all. You, mm. you got to take care of yourself now. So, you know, one of the things is that you, when you're stressed out, you got to help yourself before you can help others. So I've learned so much along the way um, in my young, young years and, you know, still going, still learning from all of you, um, all of the most venerables, uh, all from where you guys have been and how you guys have helped people for the past century. Um, and now I'm just stepping into this to get a good clue of the, the dukkha that everyone experiences, the mental pain and suffering that everyone experiences. Um, and uh, yeah, so the, the impact that it has on, on myself, I can only speak for myself. So I do get therapy myself, you know, I have, I, and this is, today's talk is to also inspire everyone around the world to mm. also seek therapy, not from just monks, but from local regional therapists. Um, usually they have a master's degree and up, and usually they have at least three years post graduate uh, of training. So literally they have anywhere from seven to 10 or 11 years before they started practicing psychotherapy. And just, you know, there's mental health stigma attached behind all of this. And I hope to inspire by and through my own story is that even a Buddhist monk here who not only deploys Buddhist psychotherapy, but also trains other younger monks, uh, the art of Buddhist psychotherapy. But I also entered therapy myself so that uh, there are things that I cannot see. There's two things that we humans do. We are blind to us and we are blind to the things that we do. So therefore, that's why we have supervising therapists mm. that supervises other therapists. And so, <clears throat> you know, the, 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 the therapist that I work with, they actually consider me as equal. But I tell them, you know, I got this case and I was wondering if I can run it by you. Or this is what I'm going through this week. I was wondering if I can run this by you. And they make their interpretation skillfully. The word therapy just simply means information. That's simply put. So as I'm teaching cognitive behavioral therapy right now, when everyone hears the word therapy, they, they kind of link that to, oh, no, I, I can't go to therapy, that I'm not crazy, so on and so on. It is far from the word crazy. Um, and so it, it just means that you need to update your software up here so that you are more tolerant, so that you have the ability to endure uh, when life comes at you. And so... Receiving therapy is one modality that uh, I do. Uh, I do uh, exercise a lot. Uh, exercise defeats de depression and also improves your mood. Mm. Um, and uh, a little bit of martial arts, but it's not what everyone thinks. The martial arts help me increase my strength. Um, mm. You know, um, and when it comes to meditation is my approach to meditation is eclectic. Uh, type of modality. What that means is that I incorporate all of them interwoven together. Um, and it is not necessarily like Anapanasati um, or the four protective meditation functions or the 10 recollections and, and so on. It depends on what kind of stress that you're dealing with at, at that moment. Our mind is subject to impermanence. It comes and it goes. Um, and, and it's funny. I mean, one of these days I'll share some of these uh, GoPro videos is that, you know, one second things can be well and the next second I'm dealing with someone who is suicidal. And then I get on TikTok and then I get someone telling me, oh, oh, 
Jesus loves you. Yeah, you, you should really <laughs> go towards <Yeah>. Jesus. <laughs> so, um, of course, you know, uh, Venerable Sarah Nampala no knows this, is that when we become social media monks or we expose ourselves towards social media, we can have all sorts of, you know, unkind or they're, they're trying to push other religions on us. Well, me being young, maybe maybe the younger uh, the younger monks they get picked on more than than mo more senior monks. So when someone tries me on that level, right? I see myself practicing the non-self, anathalakana. Is that I'm just simply a visitor, you know? Like like who 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 do I think I am? I'm not I'm not you know uh, someone special or anything like that. Stress <clears throat> is there because we take things personal. We really take it personal. You know, when people say unkind things to me or, or pick on me or they don't understand what the robes mean or if I'm out in public, uh, you know, so, so someone said to me, excuse me, sir, um, what kind of party are you going to? <laughs> I, was like, uh, I was in an area where there was a theater and kids was studying theater so they did they thought i was part of the group that we were re rehearsing he, they couldn't put together that the head and the the right shoulder exposed so i said yeah i'm a buddhist monk i i, I actually i can't party you know that's one of our mm -hmm. precepts you can't engage in entertainment so it's an opportunity to educate the public and it's an opportunity to engage mm. um so anyway so part of part of monks myself dealing with stress is to see that I am a visitor and that I should not take, take things personally. Mm. And I deal with things as they come. If something tests my patience or triggers my anger or aversion, I would use walking meditation mm. to cultivate tolerance and endurance, you know, and to sit with the uncomfortable feeling, to sit with the impact. Every time when someone does something, to you, you know, you're going to have this really difficult impact. And we humans tend to just react right away um, and put up defenses. But if we sit with the silence, we absorb the offense. And if we respond skillfully, we, we too also don't accumulate negative karma. Mm -hmm. See what they do onto you is their karma. Mm. What you do to them becomes your karma. Mm. Ah. And so we monks have to respond very skillfully because we mm. do we want to help people. Our noble and good intention is to help others. And therefore, when anything happens or triggers stress within us, we really have to go back to the text and really to just you know take it all in and go back to our practice. Ajahn Cha for the Thai forest tradition says, whatever is troubling you, that is your teacher. So mm. at any point in time when someone triggers me, I realize that in this moment, they are my teacher. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. I think it's the change of perception, right? That helps you uh, get, get relief from whatever stress you're going through. So thank you so much, uh, Venerable Trudeau, for sharing your stories and uh, all, uh, all the coping techniques, I think uh, it, it, it will be of uh, great benefit to us and as well as to those uh, who are watching us, those who are going through uh, some stressful time. And now uh, we have uh, Bante Anruddha from Cambridge, Canada, uh, raised his hand. Uh, so what is your story, Venerable Anruddha? How did you cope with your own <laughs> what a stress you went through. <laughs> okay, uh, first of all, uh, I'll say all the uh, venerable uh, sirs, venerable uh, senior monks and nuns. Uh, I have a few uh, ideas to share with all of you uh, here uh, mm -hmm. because I have become a monk about five years ago mm -hmm. at the age of uh, 37. So I have both experiences uh, in lay my life mm -hmm. and also the monkhood in five years. So uh, when I entered into the monkhood, uh, so uh, I didn't have uh, that much of uh, stress uh, for me, but when I was uh, in the monkhood, I have seen so many uh, stressful situations that uh, the other monks has faced in this uh, journey uh, to uh, uh, enlightenment. So as a Buddhist monk, all of us are uh, practicing 
the mindfulness and the satar uh, satar patan or the sati uh, mindfulness so uh, the always the stress happens always uh, we are getting stress when the expectation and the reality are in two different uh, places mm-hmm. if the uh, reality matches with the our expectation we don't feel any stress but if the reality uh, is lower than what we expect we feel the stress mm. if the uh, reality is uh, uh, del- uh, more than the what we expect we are delighted like we feel more happier so uh, that the reality always this uh, reality happen in a way according to uh, the the nature happens mm. uh, so we can say it's a cause and effect uh, thing but this this side our mind always this mind is created by ourselves so it is the view that we created by our own mind so uh, when you are in a stressful situation uh, as monks also as a lay people also we advise people to uh, share your uh, story share your the feelings with someone that you can trust mm. so that is one of the first thing that as a buddhist monk also we can take we can go to a, our senior monk or our mm. uh, 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 brother monk mm. or brother uh, sister uh, nun or someone that we can trust and we can share our uh, stressful situation how we feel what is the what is the cause of stress according to your feeling so mm. you can share your story with someone and that will help you to uh, uh, view the situation in a different angle in a different way and mm. it might change your expectation mm. or the view that you created by your mind so that will help you to uh, deal with the that situ- stressful situation because you you have a different view than your view so you can uh, go to a uh, brother monk can discuss or the uh, take some advice uh, mm. because you need that uh, solace to practice the mindfulness because when when you are, don't have that the uh, uh, calmness in your mind you can't mm. practice the mindfulness real mindfulness or the real meditation when you have a busy mind or the clutter mind so mm. the first thing when you are in a stressful situation we need to uh, calm down our mind a little bit to practice mm-hmm. the other thing so as a lay person some, there are some uh, some things that you can do you can go somewhere and you can meet uh, someone you born but uh, i have seen in monkhood there are some situations the monk can't uh, the ma- monk or nun can't share their stories with anybody or anyone mm. so you have to have a, 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 a someone you can trust uh, mm. the monkhood so Uh, i have seen that in the monkhood there are sometimes it's hard to find those kalyana mitra uh, uh, for some people so mm. that is something that you can do and start from there then you can start the uh, meditation and also mindfulness practices because all those will help you to uh, calm down yourself and get rid of the stress uh, permanently so mm. that is one thing i wanted to share Yeah, well, thank you uh, uh venerable anurudh for uh, sharing that actually uh, that's so true um here in canada the, uh, you know that uh, there is an annual campaign uh run by bell canada uh the, in the month of january right uh, so oh. you can see the billboards like you know let's talk in big yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. block letters let's talk talking i think this is exactly what we see in the in the in the sutras right in the when the vinipitaka yes. sutra pitaka we yeah, are monks are supposed to be like that <laughs> yeah they they are going to see the buddha yeah. they are talking yeah. to him about their own struggle and the buddha says okay now do this do that why don't you try this right and this is what we see and and and, and i think even now nowadays even uh, i know uh, even uh, for actually for me sometimes I, i would talk about my personal things with my uh my teacher and uh, i had a great meditation master in sri lanka with me and plus uh, my best <laughs> teacher and the doctor was my mother actually <laughs> so <laughs> I would, when i talk to my mom my mom would say okay do this it's like you know when you get sick okay drink hot water it's enough <laughs> it helps you a lot <laughs> so talking about what you're going through helps a lot so i would like to uh, acknowledge the presence of few other venerables uh, 
Venerable Jushin is joining us from Singapore. It's a, a good morning for you. And Bante Pevanatana is joining us from uh, Pittsburgh. He's actually ab was absent for uh, almost two months. He was visiting Sri Lanka, so happy to have you. And Bante Sankiche from Detroit. I know Bante Sankiche is not feeling that good, but he's here with us. I know uh, uh, your presence gives us a lot of uh, strength too. So thank you. And uh, Bante Jinananda, uh, what is the stressful situation you have uh, gone through and how did you cope with it? Uh, thank you, Bante, for the opportunity. Uh, I'm very near to Bante Rahula's room, so I speak slowly. <laughs> as I'm at the Anyasi Meditation Center today. Yeah. Uh, if, uh, if my voice is not uh, too low, I'm sorry about that. Okay. I don't so want to disturb him mm -hmm. and make myself stressful. Um, mm -hmm. So yes, it's very recent one. And uh, yesterday I was uh, having uh, certain things at the temple and I know that I have to fly tomorrow morning to Washington DC for my seven days trip. Uh, at the last minute of the day, I came to know that I didn't get the antigen test done to be able oh. to fly. <laughs> so I felt that how people feel stress if oh. this come to people. And I rushed to a nearest drug, drug store. And I, when I entered, I thought that this man who is standing there at the pharmacist should allow me to do that. Mm -hmm. And I speak softly and kindly and allowing himself to uh, welcome my suggestion. So it worked. Mm. Then uh, I, felt, I felt it's so nice that I believed my karma because I, I always, uh, I always uh, think this, that the good things I, I, I have been doing helping me a lot. Mm. So that it works. So when I uh, got to the car to rush to a drugstore, I thought that I have been helping people throughout the day, throughout the week. That's why I forgot this. So uh, I, these good quality, good things I was uh, involved in should come and help me to get because I, and, and the whole trip is about uh, respecting uh, my teachers and uh, be, uh, Bante Rahul, Bante Mudita, Bante Sankic and also Bante Ji tomorrow. So it's, uh, this uh, good thing should help me. Mm. It works. Then uh, when I, <clears throat> five minutes before the, uh, you know, flying, I got a message from Washington DC, from the place I go first to get the car. Everybody uh, except the car got uh, positive, COVID positive. <laughs> so fortunately they didn't use the car for several days uh, so that I didn't have any problem. And then the when I get into the car, I don't have telephone lines to connect with anyone. And because my telephone line is Canadian one, and when you use it in the US, you have to pay a huge money for it. Okay. So uh, when I get into the car and I notice that the map is, doesn't work without the internet. So how about if I got the wrong, uh, you know, roads to Bante Rahula's place, Bante Puratana's place and so on. Then I thought that everything should work because I'm going on, uh, on, on purpose for good things. So nothing happened to me in a wrong way. So what I'm bringing here is that you have a stressful situation almost every day, whether you're a monk or nun or, lay, or any person. Mm. But the thing you need to do how to deal with, how to address those emotions. Mm. So I think uh, many monks who... Uh, every monk who talk about the stress and the control of stress uh, uh, split out very nice uh, method. So my way um, is here is to believe on your karma, trust on you, and you should have some, uh, you know, theoretical as well as uh, empirical support from the Dhamma to, uh, you know, use for this situation so that it works. Mm -hmm. And I thought that if everything... Uh, goes wrong, it's fine because I'm still alive mm. and there would be other chances of doing uh, these things. So uh, releasing those pressures and open up your mind and believing your good karma are some of the ways that I use always to overcome negative emotion. Mm. So um, when I have a stressful situation, I 
less, uh, I do not speak too much, even Bhante Sunita with, who lives with me and also other monks, because that's the way I find the way out of stressful situation and it works mm. too. Mm. So some people, for some people w- talking too much and uh, opening up their heart with so much, so many conversation would work. But for me, I, I find uh, the way out of a stressful situation being silent and looking and thinking the new avenues that works mm. for me. I so uh, even tomorrow I have, uh, I would have some situation where I do not find right uh, uh, rights to Bhavana society as the way I think, but I think that uh, my good karma would work tomorrow and make me uh, <laughs> to Bhavana monastery uh, on time before the evening. So everything works in that way. That's what I want to share about the Sarupa. Yeah, thank you, uh, Bhante Jinnananda. Of course, some people like to talk, some people don't. Even silence uh, helps to distress yourself. Uh, and of course, no need to worry about the transportation. While Bhante Yogavacha Rahula is there in Washington, D.C., while the uh, Paratan Nayakahandra is there in the Washington, D.C., why do we have to worry about the transportation? <laughs> They are the big shots in. <laughs> so thank you, Bhante Jinananda, for sharing your story. Now, uh, I would like to uh, uh, invite uh, Bhante Shantasobara from Los Angeles. Uh, so what is your stressful situation? How did you cope with uh, such things? Venerable Shantasobara. Oh, thank you very much to all the venerable monks and nuns and giving me this opportunity. And actually, this is a very... Uh, nice uh, topic today and uh, when it come to my personal life that i had a very stressful life i think that's why uh, i i that go got this all the opportunities in my life it was not easy personally for me mm. but uh, uh, mainly what i want to share because uh, there are a lot of uh, listeners so uh, the background, the, the this knowledge came to me through martial art and yoga and acupuncture uh-huh. and the healing. Yeah, because I used to deeply practice with the acupuncture and with a lot of people. And uh, actually, the stress is a very it's very serious because mm-hmm. it has power to it has power to kill us. Mm-hmm. And there are a lot of people cannot handle it. We, it is mm-hmm. it, it's real. We have to accept it. And, uh, and at the same time, each and every person react in different ways. Mm. So it's, it's not the same. And mm. sometimes the very thing is when the stress arises, sometimes it's really attacked to ourselves at it and it makes us blind. And anymore, we can't see what it is. As one of the uh, venerable monk told that uh, if sometimes uh, we can't go into the even meditation uh, because if you if you get into trace, sometimes it it completely destroy that inside uh, the the pattern. So mm. that what I learn and how I get into that pattern because especially when I learned the judo, that uh, when you when somebody choke, it's it's really shut down whole nerve system, mm. and you you kind of like almost paralyzed, and it deeply affect to your brain. Because you, you can't see, you can't hear, you don't know what to do. So that is one of the, the very real experience that we gain. And other thing is, I used to practice with one of the master, uh, the katana, the sword, that uh, if you make a wrong, wrong movement and you get cut, and at the same time, if you make a wrong decision and somebody may be innocent person, can get cut. So mm. you have to be, you have to well disciplined. So in, in there, the very major technique that we gain when we get into a situation, right away, <clears throat> what I what I learned through all this practice, it is not permanent. Mm. <laughs> yeah, before I go blind or before I get shut down myself, that it's a very simple message. When you learn to practice, it, it comes naturally. 
that whatever go through come to mind or the body as feelings it is not permanent mm. it it's going to go away mm. so in that very moment we create a gap rather than reacting and go with that flow you creating a gap to stay away from that flow so it it another thing is personally how i uh, in day to day life when i have a very stressful situation and the very first thing i do myself i get a very cold bath and i clean myself mm. i i don't just stuck and other thing is i do all the cleaning inside the temple myself mm. and especially more than any other time i uh, i physically engage with the the situation and try to keep moving mm. so the next thing is i exercise mm. no matter what every day i exercise and i work with lot of young people here and i uh, work with lot of this uh, people who try to suicide themselves and the very first thing i tell them and it work so that's why i, I want to bring it to here because mm. whoever the listen so if you try to keep move with something and engaging yourself and giving your best for whatever you do and it will help you to slowly create a gap and so another thing is personally for me that i learned a lot of uh, sen stories and jataka stories mm-hmm. and that became a so the grateful help for me when a situation come mm-hmm. uh, it, it gave me a opportunity to understand there are a lot of and autobiographies and there are a lot of people went through hard time and they they came out of it and they they build up a good life mm. so when i remind myself that and it gave me a kind of like a strength to move mm. forward through the situation mm. so uh, how i handle with all, most of the young people and i tell don't listen to that whatever in your mind and try to learn especially the auto read auto biographies mm. and sometimes if anything doesn't work like that way sometimes i watch a james bond movies <laughs> <laughs> no it's really help there are there are a lot of good movies like uh, um uh, the the great uh, samurai warrior miyamoto musashi the the yeah. samurai the, the last samurai movie uh. and uh, another thing is the uh, morgan freeman this uh, last uh, night so and uh, uh, pist of legend so those some movies kind of like because it, it it talk about the real life and when you are get into trap and how you get out of the the situation because if you you can't you can't destroy yourself you are responsible for your life mm. so and that way what i understood that uh, stress is a kind of like a giving us an opportunity because otherwise if the life happen the way we want it not going to become a life mm. so, so when the stressful situation come when the turbulence come i always know or oh, it's kind of like a getting an energy drink i know it's a, it's a try to try to make make a, <laughs> a kind of like a good good way to move. so i always look for the best opportunity to get out of the situation and that always push me beyond the yeah. limit mm. and so that's why I always whoever come and in in, in any situation i mm. tell them remember when when they go through stressful situation remember this is the this is something kind of like a message try to indicate you 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 can upgrade yourself so mm. try to try to get the best out of it mm. so rather than going backward then it it gave personally that's how i deal so yeah i it, and it gave me opportunity and then i know that is the way i know and that's why when somebody asks me that is what i tell okay do this maybe it's <laughs> worth for you <laughs> i think i think it's so wonderful how you brought it up like reading the autobiographies helps you uh, to get, get the relief from stressful situations but even today i think that's the main uh, reason why we have this topic i know all these are uh, great masters in the in this zoom platform you all are doing amazing job i know you have been helping so many people so many communities you know uh, but going through uh, going to help people sometimes uh, uh, could cause a lot of stress too 
And I know you're dealing well, you're coping with these uh, stressful situations well, and you're still smiling. And, and that's, the, that's the main thing, like if people are curious, you know, you're doing, uh, you're, you're doing so great, you help a lot of people, you have so much on your plate, but it's still, you, you are smiling. What is the secret behind this smile? <laughs> so that's why, you know, from all this, uh, we started with Bhante Yoga with Rahul, you know, his life, his story, and how he go, and other venerable, so, you know, so these are wonderful autobiographies, you know, short one. <laughs> so now let's go to Bhante Kusala who raised his hand. And Bhante Kusala from uh, Mississauga, our, our center, Toronto. So what is the stressful situation you faced and how did you cope with it? Bhante, I was uh, flying from Boston to Toronto once and, uh, and I just suddenly heard this uh, alarm of the, of the flight. Um, and at that time, I have been watching too many uh, plane crash videos. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All these Mayday call videos. And I realized uh, there was this girl sitting next to me and I asked what the alarm is about. She doesn't have any clue about it at all. So I kind of stressed her too by <laughs> asking that question. <laughs> And I'm like, I'm a monk, I'm not supposed to feel this much anxiety. And then it dawned on me that it is just this, the plane indicating the lower altitude. But it took me a minute to realize it and then gather myself and focus on just, uh, you know, just letting it be now that it arose in me and it has to live its life and it will vanish, and it's not mine. But again, after, you know, after that incident, I stopped watching all these Mayday Call videos. <laughs> That's a good thing. And then it vanished. <laughs> um, and when you said we'll be talking about um, monks coping with mental illness, uh, illness, I said, you know, I need the whole one hour and a half, you know, because <laughs> <laughs> there are too many stories to share. But this is um, one that I, I wanted to really share. Um, and I'll come back when Venerable uh, Bhikshuni Jur, uh, she yeah, has. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, thank you, Bhante Kusala, for sharing your. Uh, story. I, I know we all go through something, and I know uh, uh, this is a kind reminder to uh, our friends who are watching us. Actually, there are a lot of people watching us uh, this program on Facebook and YouTube, and uh, we already have a few questions. But you know, uh, I will take your questions. Meantime, dear friends, if you have questions, please uh, uh, write them down. Uh, we will go through your questions. So. Venerable Jachan from Singapore, good morning to you. And uh, I know, I remember when uh, we were organizing <laughs> the first uh, Vesak festival here in Toronto, in the city, because we, both of us were involved. And we were so much concerned, worried, is it going to be okay? How is it going to be unfolding? Is it going to rain? What if something happens? <laughs> so we, we were concerned. We had. Uh, some sort of a stress, but we managed, it went well. So now, uh, Venerable Jachin, what is your story? What's the stressful situation you face and how did you cope with it? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Bhante. And um, yeah, we gone through uh, the first Buddha's birthday and organizing events is always, in a way, is quite uh, stressful, but yeah. it's always good that we always have a backup plan. So uh, this is something that uh, in, in Pongpang Shan, we used to organize event and uh, every time we face with challenge. But I would like to share with my personal stressful challenge in my life uh, because uh, actually why I am back to Singapore uh, at, uh, because in 2019, I got cancer and it's the last stage of cancer. Mm. So uh, at that time, because my own cultivation is that I always contemplate on the Four Noble Truths and the Three Dharma Sale. The Four Noble Truths about our 
life, our truth of life. And the three Dharma cell is that we always remember that everything <clears throat> will change. But before I got this, uh, this sickness, to me, it seems like I understand. And this is something that I, I, I can use in my life. But uh, all the challenge I'm able to compare with the challenge when I was facing, uh, when the doctor says that, well, you know what, uh, the, the, the cancer cell is very, very aggressive. And then uh, it, uh, you have to go through, you have to go through a very uh, tough treatment. So at that time, then I start to realize that whether I am applying what I learned from the Buddha in my life or not, and how do I cope with it? Because I still have a temple to take care of in Boston. And at that time in that temple, uh, there's a new nuns coming in, just arrived two weeks, uh, still unstable. And uh, I, I, and like Bante know that in Fong Guangshan, we organize a lot, a lot of events. So in Boston, I try to organize a lot of events. And I just realized that I have to go to surgery and ends up I have to go to three surgery after that. Uh, and one of the surgery is that I have a heavy bleeding, very serious bleeding. So when I face with this reality, first thing is that I have to think about how am I supposed to um, manage the temple first since the mm. nun is so new the temple still have events to go on every Sunday we have to organize uh, chanting service so what am I supposed to, to, to arrange for the temple the second thing is that Bokwashan is a big congregation I have to report to the headquarters about the situation and mm. they might ask me to go back to Taiwan then what happens to the temple the third thing is that how am I supposed to arrange my time for the treatment hand who take care of me so all these things come in at the same time so everything happens in 2019 coming at the same time and also the boston temple we are in the process of maybe rebuild the temple i have to go through with the city and to ask for uh the uh the the, the, the rebuild of the city uh, of the temple so this is pretty uh, pretty stressful. Yeah. But how do I manage to go through it? I realize something is that just, just do as according to what's supposed to do. When it needs to go for treatment, just go for treatment. Mm. And then arrange the time for the temple. If we can't do it, if I'm not here, they can't do it, then we stop the event. Mm. The event won't disappeared because I don't didn't join in or I don't I uh, didn't arrange it right yeah and the members is that will ask the members is that can you help to do this do this and do this and arrange it so uh, what the Buddha taught us become a very big strength to me is that sickness is part of the truth in our life that's the for suffer the, the first for suffering and people will come people will go. So this is what also the Buddha taught us. And most important is that the impermanence. So when I was dealing with the treatment, uh, especially with the chemo, it was really tough. It's not something that can be describable how, how I feel from my, from my body, the feeling. But I always tell myself is that it will pass because time will pass. It will pass. The body either it get worse or it get better, but it will pass that feeling. So this is something just to share with everyone because it ends up is that when now when I teach about the Four Noble Truth, when I teach about the Dharma, I should, shouldn't say teach, I share with everyone about the Four Noble Truth, the Three Dharma Seal, I have the, uh, a, a, a more uh, personal experience feeling that I can share with people and I mm. when I'm doing counseling or when I was doing my treatment I still need to do counseling to uh, two members that got cancer and I can't tell them that I have cancer as well <laughs> so they complain to me about their suffering and I have to still have to comfort them that everything <laughs> will be fine yeah. yeah so I was at that time feeling this uh, experiencing the same thing too but everything will pass and this is what the Buddha taught us even mm. stress uh, we will pass as well. Yeah, that is, a, you need to have the self-compassion. You know, uh, uh, to be honest, Verba Joshen, I, I had no clue what we were going through. Uh, but today I know 
and I have great admiration and respect for you. And we were working uh, together uh, and, and, and spreading Dhamma and making great awareness of Dhamma in this country for many years. So, uh, and also being in that uh, situation, you helped um, uh, a lot of people. I think uh, that that was the true blessing for you. That was the great medicine. <laughs> so thank you for sharing your story with us. And uh, okay, so I, uh, okay, we have a, a Bante Pevaratana, raised three son. That's good, <laughs> after a long time. Bante Pevaratana from uh, Pittsburgh. And uh, Bante Pevaratana, what is your stressful situation and how did you deal with it? So my reverential greetings to all the uh, monks and the nuns. And I was so touched to hear all these personal stories and the techniques that they are using, mm -hmm. you know, feel very uh, blessed to, to, to have heard this story. So when I was listening to these, you know, stories, I was thinking, oh, you know, what kind of, you know, the stressful situation that, that I talk about is, is not really, really stressful. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, you know, I, so I think most the stressful moments that I had is has to do with either academic um, you know, works, you know, like when you are, you know, uh, reaching a deadline to, you know, submit something Oh, uh, you know, our temple work, you know, when you have so many things to do and then you feel that you don't have enough uh, time to do that. Mm. So that is, you know, the most uh, stressful situation. And particularly, uh, I remember, you know, we, uh, we recently moved to a new, uh, a new location. Uh, and then uh, during that time, the, we had the day to move and, you know, arranging everything, there's movements, arranging, you know, uh, many things, you know. And so I, I feel like, you know, the time is not enough and the resources that I have to deal with this move is not enough. So mm. the last year during the time of well, moving our temple is the time that I felt stressed more, uh, mostly. Uh, so then if, when I reflect on how did I deal with that stress is that I realized that actually the, our stress also coming from our expectations, you know, like uh, our expectation that, uh, that, you know, I had to be like that, or maybe, you know, we have to finish this at this time. Mm -hmm. So the expectations that we have placed on ourselves is, is one uh, cause that creates a stress in us. So mm -hmm. the way I handle is that, you know, um, I, when I realized that I had not enough time and not enough resources to do this move uh, as I planned, you know, on the specific day that I want to do. So I reflect that, okay, in that case, uh, I, I actually let go of the specific day that I, I said for myself, I talk to people, I talk to other relevant people and explain the situation. And I kind of let go of that, you know, expectation. And, and I think same thing also happened to me when I was doing uh, like academic writings and when I, when I kind of submit on time. And that's also expectation that I have placed on, on myself. You know, sometimes I may fail, but, but that's mm. okay. And that's okay. So, so letting go of the expectations, uh, letting go of the, you know, uh, you know, initial plans that we have, you know, set for ourselves is one way, actually, you know, we can uh, uh, release the stress. And those times, you know, I, I mostly like to do some chanting. <laughs> mm. And, you know, I, I chant, you know, wishing, you know, strength and wishing, you know, may some miracles happen, you know, may, maybe I receive enough help, you know, move uh, through this. So I do a lot of chanting, uh, particularly during the time of stress. And mainly, I think, letting go. Uh, of the expectation can help too. Yeah. yeah, that is what they call one of the techniques uh, help me with the stress is lower your expectations. <laughs> when you have too much on your head, it's burning you. <laughs> Put it aside. So now let me uh, read uh, uh, some great comments made by our viewers, our friends. Um, this one from Facebook, Nimalika Jason is saying, Bante Tridao Monk, the self-regulation techniques you mentioned can be used in our daily lives. Thank you. Um, and, and in uh, Facebook, uh, sorry, in the YouTube, uh, Yuri uh, Kutinho says, uh, thank you very much for sharing from your experiences, venerable monks and nuns. Uh, these uh, live chats are very interesting and uh, helpful. 
So um, I would like to uh, take two questions from one from the uh, YouTube, one from Facebook. Uh, I think those two uh, questions are very interesting. Uh, Pavitra Ratnasuri in YouTube says, to get rid of depression, I started doing meditation every morning. I, th uh, I thank for everything I have, and I think everything I need, I will receive. And I think the I thank the universe. Is it aligning with Dhamma? And this is one question. The another question uh, asked by a friend in Facebook is very interesting. He said, India, when depressed, I don't have the push or care to do the right things, such as cleaning, shower, etc. How can I push myself to do these things? that will help me, but something in me isn't letting me? I said, that's a great question. Uh, anyone? Uh, 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 let me ask uh, from Bhante Yoga Vajra Rahula. <laughs> uh, Bhante Rahula, do you have any tips, insights for that question? The question, how can I push myself to do things that will help me but something in me isn't letting me. Uh, I can't hear Bhante, you are mute. Uh, okay. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I will just give the advice that the Buddha had given. Yeah. To, to contemplate about impermanence and death. And especially that's an antidote for overcoming uh, laziness and so on. Of course, having depression is a more serious uh, state than just uh, you know, sort of being uh, lazy. But to know that nothing is gonna happen without your own uh, effort. And that you know, the Buddha said that the effort has to be made today because we don't know if there's going to be a but tomorrow, and if if we leave this world with the mind still uh, uh, confused, then uh, that's going to be even a worse state. So the sense of urgency, sometimes it can help you to drag yourself out of bed mm. and, and, and do what is, uh, you know, the, the needful. Yeah. So that's uh, one thing. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, Venerable Trudeau, do you have any uh, insights for that question? Oh, well, in regards to that question, and also earlier in the beginning, someone uh, asked Venerable Rahula about the uh, burning in the mind, and I would, I would, I would piggyback on, uh, on that by saying that it is probably neuroinflammation. And however, the medical definition on that is within the def the definition on, on the neuropsychological definition. But anytime when someone is trying you or, you know, rubbing you the wrong way in mm. life, there is always inflammation of the mind in general, just because, you know, nothing good happens when cortisol is being triggered, cortico cortisol stress uh, hormones is being released. And so therefore we feel this, this uh, pressure in our mind that could feel like it is burning. So therefore, you know, um, just to go back to that very beginning, um, where there is causation, there's also <clears throat> destination. And so whatever is causing you stress, no matter who it is, um, even family members, one must cut the cord or at least temporarily take a, take a break so that you don't suffer in the mind, especially a burning sensation. That's pretty serious. In regards to the second question that was here is that I would, you know, the Buddha emphasizes human effort and human self-discipline, human effort and the willpower um, to get what needs to be done. Uh, you know, the Buddha said, study what needs to be studied, practice what needs to be practiced. Mm. What's the third? <laughs> realize what needs to be realized. Oh, realize what needs to be realized. I'm yeah. stressed right now. 
<laughs> um, Relax. And, take a deep breath. <laughs> take a deep breath. <laughs> and so, uh, so yeah. So you know, um, and again, uh, the effectiveness of death meditation is the problem. Is we think we have time, and especially in the West, we get a little too comfortable, and we find all sorts of ways to pick up, uh, all sorts of ways to. Um, create excuses for ourselves oh i'm too busy i can't do this i can't do that i can't take out the trash i have work to do i have to feed the, the i have to pick up my kids so you know just be like the nike sign just do it right um my closing remarks before the end of this is that our viewers are probably asking themselves well how do i help the monastic order how do i help monks and nuns that you see here presently in front of you as we all share our personal stories to inspire you all and to give insight behind the scenes, behind the scenes of what we all go through. And I like for everyone to, you know, really reflect on each story that was here today. And one of the ways that you can honor your teacher, as we all know, the Theravada tradition is uh, slowly, uh, you know, downsizing um, in, in the most in the most uh, accurate sense to describe the Theravada tradition is that we're dying, uh, pretty mm. much. Uh, we're dying in regards to the number of, of monks and nuns, um, our age, the fact that we are subject to old age, disease, death, uh, and decay. And so, you know, I hold the Theravada tradition dearly to my heart uh, just because, you know, it's, it's beautiful. And one of the ways to honor your teacher, any teacher that is here and any teacher at your local monastery is when your teacher advises you to practice something, to really take it seriously. Um, and they have very little time with you um, when they give such recommendations uh, and advice uh, according to the teachings. It's because, you know, they're really busy uh, mm. with things going on at the temple and in events and psychotherapy that they're doing with other people. And when you all practice, uh, especially giving um, uh, and translating the love that we have for our teachers is by and through giving and by and through action. Um, not only you mitigate your own greed, aversion, anger, and ignorance of the Four Noble Truth, but you're doing so much to help the community grow and that people who could ultimately benefit so much from the direct teachings of the teachers uh, that you see here and elsewhere locally. Uh, and so, you know, hold your teachers dearly, respect them to the utmost reverence. Uh, and in life, always give more and take less is what yeah. the Buddha would want you to, to do. Mm -hmm. uh, we Thank monks you. are the living Dhamma uh, since the Buddha have passed away. And when we chant, we are orally transmitting the teachings from one to another. And so it is being passed down very sacredly and very profound. Yeah. And so to keep the, the lineage of the Theravada and Mahayana and all of the schools of Buddhism going, we also depend on the lay people. And you all have a lot of uh, contributions and you all can make a difference, each and one of you that is watching, um, you know, and so I just uh, wanted to give that recommendation and, um, and, and, and last uh, note on this yeah. is that you all make us happy when you come to the temple. <laughs> yeah. You all make us happy when you put your hands together and you res pay respect I, to the Buddha, to the Sangha. Yeah. Um, and I think this so is a great year. That this is the very reason why we are having this bi-weekly discussion. We all come together on Zoom platform. And this is such a great sense of unity we create and it makes people very happy. And especially joining from different countries, different, different cities. And, and, and this is a, a way of actually uh, uh, releasing you know, whatever stress you <laughs> we all go through. So uh, we are coming to an end, but I would like to hear from uh, uh, Sister Kema, in, in, in just uh, two, two minutes, two, three minutes, uh, whether you had any stressful situation, how you cope, uh, cope with that? <laughs> well, there's lots of stressful situations here in India. <laughs> uh, I know that you went through yeah. <laughs> a stressful situation recently. 
my, my re most recent stressful situation is to, to change. You mentioned some of the wonderful things about the three characteristics, the four noble truths, and everything that I deal with and I teach people basically using the three characteristics, using the four noble truths is really important. And you also tapped into a whole lot of when something's happening, the best thing to do is change that change it and uh, take hold of uh, something to replace it. And effort is one of the words that's problematic for um, us in mm. translation, but we have to go back to very specifically because one of the most hopeful things in the teachings in the suttas are going, really looking closely at uh, right effort and right striving because it has four pieces and one is to see that there is this thing going on so the first thing is to identify this unwholesome mind state of where you are with stress or tension mm -hmm. the second one is to release that stress and relax your relax to, just let a breath out you know when you grab onto something let it go so I, i've been telling people just never mind as you let go <laughs> and relax. And then the, the last two pieces is bring up something wholesome. This is important, this piece of one and two and three and four. One and two does not help you. It it's, it's does very quickly, maybe temporarily, but it doesn't hold on and grow in your mind. What changes mind in the case of stress and tension is to recognize the unwholesome thing you're dealing, stress that's happening. And number two, let go of it. And then number three, bring up a wholesome in place of it and then keep that going. And sister did a really great job of doing this. Uh, sister, she did a really great job of doing that with explaining that she hit the stay in the present time is the wholesome and keep that going. She hit the Anicca and many people are talking about Anicca Dukkha, not to pinpointing it and showing you how to do this. But right effort is the to see the unwholesome, let it go and relax and then bring up a wholesome and smiling is the quickest one the quickest one to change the brain and the brain can only do two things one thing at one time we'd like to say it was doing two things but one thing at a time and so when it you bring that up uh, bring that smile up and then you keep going with whatever you're doing in life whatever you're doing in meditation this isn't just for meditation and recently i've started saying well right effort and right striving are described the same way could it be that right effort we have to pay attention and learn it and drill the mind on that and when we're doing the wholesome in place of it and keep going in and uh, smiling into whatever we're doing but the striving could it be like faculties and powers change and they're the same thing and what the powers we say are automatic could it be that right effort changes to right striving, and that's automatically happening. I just recently, very quickly, very quickly, uh, yeah. had a young man, which uh, this is about the spread of the Theravada teaching, um, not the leaving of it, but the spread of it, which I like to talk about a lot, okay? And uh, in the growth of it, um, what happened was, how does this, did this stuff spread in the first place? And what I see happening with my student on our online retreat a month and a half back, about a month and a half back, he was in Stockholm, Sweden, and he did terrific on his retreat and really shifted everything in 10 days and kept going. I didn't know he was keeping going, but then he called and invited me to come and do something in Europe. And I'm probably going to go and do that now for a few weeks to leave the heat here and just go and do it. But besides that little piece, okay, the thing was the person he told me to work with in his organization to get this going is in London. And he's a young man, 28 years old. The person who changed was about 40, okay? He just got so excited, he changed. He told his friend what happened and was working and his clients, he's a coach, a world-class coach, and he's clients now all want to do this, what we're going to do. So I'm getting very excited about this is really going to be fun. Okay. But the thing about it is that young man is now communicating with the planning for what we're going to do and told me I am the happiest thing in the world right now. <laughs> and I said, what, why? He said, well, because Pierre told me this and because he explained what we're doing and the practice. And I started doing it now in one and a half months, this is the shortest I've ever had this happen. He flipped his mind and his mind is automatically doing what I just described to you, the right effort. He flipped it. 
I mean, in other words, it turned to automatic. So this is where I get excited about what was in the text precisely mm -hmm. because the Buddha didn't skip anything. Mm -hmm. And if you look at these things, uh, you know, pr more precisely, the, the suttas that just had to do with how to get out of situations of stress, tension and all that stuff, you find there are a lot of answers. So I hope we'll talk someday about how Theravada can look more closely if they think they're leaving. They look more closely at what the younger monks, 20s and 30s are talking about. If they are talking about, they're talking to me about it a lot, you know. So now I'm going to go teach 100 monks like in, in, during, in the next couple of months. And I've been waiting five years to be able to show them this, you know, a, a, a section on meditation that can be taught very quickly that even the truck drivers and illiterate farmer and everybody can start doing and really have fun and change yeah. you know and and what your key to what you're saying when you find a solution for stress is this wonderful thing of this is happening maybe this person felt like it was happening to them you just described some and felt it was happening to them and the buddha shows you how to walk around with another angle maybe everything is not happening to me. This is what changed my whole life. You know, maybe everything is happening from me and I just need to understand how. And that's the gratitude practice. It's changed my student's life when they're coming with depression. Well, then sit there and talk about gratitude before you go to bed at night. Set yourself up to sleep and when you wake up in the morning, start smiling and decide to change your perspective to a more impersonal perspective. Nothing is happening to me everything could be happening from me and if it is i can do one thing at a time and forget the past for a few minutes let go of the future for a few minutes and sit right here and just do this and then look in my mind say wow when i smile how do you feel i've done that with thousands of people in a tent where it's so hot they're about to drop you know and and just teaching them precepts but the one thing i'll say now listen if you're really heavy right now what would happen if you smile, let go of all your worries from yesterday or tomorrow, and you just smile? Now, how do you feel when they frown? No. Oh, I don't want to smile that much. You smile. <laughs> just for a minute, smile. And they go, oh. and you go, how did that feel? So how does your mind feel? Now, what if you kept doing that and you kept building that instead of what about worrying about what Muta? It's a yeah. precious setup suit. So that's, that's all I want to tell you. Yeah. Like, so you thank you. Bit. Uh, yeah. Thank you, uh, <laughs> Sister Kema. I know you have it so much. It can grow. It can grow a lot. <laughs> <laughs> don't, tell, no. don't tell me it's leaving because now I have all these people coming and I need some nuns to help me teach nuns. <laughs> you know? So please, don't so, tell me that it's, it's slowing yeah. down. <laughs> so now, now this is, uh, otherwise, you know, if you don't finish it right on time, it's going to cause more stress. <laughs> <laughs> So thank you, Sister Kema, for sharing your story and, and, and uh, you know, ma uh, making effort and practicing gratitude helps a lot too. So today we learned so much from all of I know uh, there are other venerable monks and nuns in this uh, Zoom platform. They have lots to share with us, uh, but today we did not uh, uh, have time for them to ask questions or to share their stories. But in coming weeks, we, we are going to have uh, more sessions and on this topic. And, and of course, we will get to tell our stories and share our insights with our audience. So today, uh, we are very uh, grateful uh, to all the venerable monks and nuns. Uh, thank you so much for joining this bi-weekly sutra discussion. And, and this, you know, when I look at this uh, screen, seeing the monks and nuns from different countries in different colors coming to one place is such a great relief for us. <laughs> and it's also such a huge relief for people who are watching this from different countries. So I'm very grateful to all of you. May you all have the Buddha blessings. And uh, I know the Vesak uh, uh, festival month is coming up in May. And uh, we, we were supposed to meet uh, bi-weekly in two weeks time, but guess what? One Monday is falling right exactly on, on full moon day, uh, May 16th. So uh, instead of meeting in two weeks time, I would like to uh, meet with all of you in three weeks time on May 16th to have a, a Vesak <laughs> celebration <laughs> coming together in one place. 
and talking about the life of the Buddha and teachings of the Buddha and uh, some stories. So, uh, uh, and I will send an email to all of you with details and I'm hoping to meet all of you, but now I would like to respectfully invite Bhante Uparatana to, <laughs> if possible, Bhante Uparatana to recite the Fatima verses for us today. Thank you, well, well, monks and nuns, and together, and uh, very happy, and uh, we are celebrate, going to be celebrate Vaisakha Day or two, and mm -hmm. be healthy and wealthy and success and long life. Mm -hmm. And with that, our conclusion, सब पापस आकरनां कुसलस उपसंपदा साचित पारियो दापनां एतं बुद्धान सासनां Kanti Pareman Tapo Titika Nibanam Pareman Vadanti Buddha Nahi Pabjito Parup Gati Samanu Oti Parang vihet yanto Anup vado Anup gato Pati mok kech sangwaro Matanyu taj bhatan Antanch sayana sanang Adichitnpech ayogo Etang buddhan sasanang Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you, Bhante Uparatana, for beautifully reciting the verses, Fatima verses. It, uh, it is your chanting, your voice taking us back to the Buddha's time. <laughs> Thank you so much. And uh, once again, may all the blessings of the Buddha, Dhamma, and the Sangha continue to be with all of you for your health and safety, uh, for your good health, for your happiness. Uh, may none of you ever experience any form of stress. <laughs> May Dhamma uh, give us the strength to continue uh, the Dhamma services around the world with uh, health and happiness. And may Devas, celestial beings, continue to protect and guard all of you with the divine blessings. And with these thoughts in mind, uh, I would like to conclude today's Bhaiveka Sutta discussion. And I'm hoping to see you all on May 16th to celebrate Vesak on this platform. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> May. <laughs>